everybody, this is Michael Parent from Michael Parent Consulting Services. Today what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about a cool tool that is used in the Six Sigma uh, toolbox and it's called the FMEA, the Failure Mode and Effects Analysis. Uh, this tool, you know, it's kind of a mouthful, it seems intimidating, <laughs> Failure Mode and Effects Analysis, but it's actually um, kind of a very easy tool to use and it's very helpful I would say in two areas of operations. The first one is risk uh, analysis and mitigation. Understanding, uh, well essentially what the failure mode and effects analysis is, is it's going to take you through step by step to say what can go wrong, what's its impact, and then what are our current state methods uh, to detect this thing and how severe is um, its effect. And then from there, we can start to prioritize what we need to work on and what are risks that we can frankly live with uh, in our organization. And this really helps us understand where our vulnerabilities are as an organization, as an operation, as a manufacturing plant, whatever it may be, and then take necessary steps to improve them. Um, particularly looking at three aspects, either improving the detectability that something's going to go wrong, either improving the frequency or the likelihood of occurrence that something's going to go wrong, or decreasing the severity that when something does go wrong, it won't be as bad as it was, right? So that's what the failure mode and effects analysis is from a tool perspective. It helps with risk mitigation and analysis. It also helps us with reliability, right? So as we can look at these things, we can build a more robust system rather than trying to mitigate the risks, we can say, well, um, let's build something maybe in the design stage of a product or, or whatnot where um, we're going to support this component of, of the product and that will decrease the occurrence or the severity of any kind of fracture or shock that is uh, put on that product. Um, so when we talk about this, we really talk about two different types of FMEAs the product or the you know kind of development FMEA, uh, sometimes a D FMEA, or a process FMEA, sometimes a P FMEA. And what I'm gonna do here is I've actually gone through, um, I will call it a process uh, FMEA of playing a guitar. Um, let's say I'm playing an acoustic guitar at a, um, I don't know, local coffee shop, local uh, music venue, what have you. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong and they're not necessarily related to the design of the guitar, right? The design of the guitar could be flawless and yet there are still things that can go wrong. So what are possible things that can go wrong if I'm playing at a venue? Well, I could have a note that's out of tune and I wouldn't be in a harmony with the rest of my band. Uh, and okay, well, you know, so that's the first thing. There's a potential failure mode of a note out of tune. Um, what are the failure mode effects? Well, for, for these, um, it's that it's unharmonious with the rest of the band, and there are different causes associated uh, with this note being out of tune. Maybe the string is out of tune. Maybe I uh, have a bad fretboard. Maybe it was something with the manufacturer where this fretboard uh, is not correct. And as I go up the neck of the guitar, I go slightly out of tune. It's something called intonation. Or maybe I'm just not that good of a guitar player and I played the wrong note. Um, so for each of these things, there are different levels of severity that can be associated with this note being out of tune. There's also a different level of occurrence that could be associated with this, right? So um, if the string is out of tune, that's probably more likely than the, uh, than the fretboard actually being a poorly designed fretboard. Uh, and then likewise, it's probably more likely that I play the wrong note than I forget to tune my guitar. Um, but because of that, there are different things that could happen and we have current process controls to help us uh, mitigate these uh, potential failure modes. So we always tune prior to the show, right? Almost every guitar is tuned uh, prior to the show. Um, I don't know if we have anything for a uh, checking the correct fretboard design uh, and then I can always practice more to play the right note for the particular song I'm playing. Um, now I also have the detectability. How detectable is it that something went wrong? Um, playing music it's actually probably worse to have it detectable 
um, but mostly in manufacturing and whatnot, it's good to have something detectable because then you can go and stop it from occurring again and again, uh, particularly in automated processes, right? So then we get the risk priority number, which is just the product of all three dimensions, the detectability, the likelihood of occurrence and the severity. And this helps us prioritize, right? And then we can start talking about other countermeasures that we can put in place to improve the system. Okay, well, if, I, if I'm really worried about hitting the wrong notes, and that's kind of one of my biggest vulnerabilities, maybe I should take some sheet music up with me as I'm playing, right? Um, likewise, you can come up with alternative methods to play notes. Um, playing more open strings uh, reduces the amount of time that you actually have to hit that string correctly, right, with your fingers. Um, and we can do this, I'll do it quickly for the rest of them. Um, there's also a potential failure mode of breaking a string. If you break a string on a guitar, you're really unable to complete the rest of the song. Um, and there's a number of reasons that string could break, right? Um, the severity for all of them is very high. I am unable to complete the song. It's, uh, it's a nine. It's a nine out of nine. Um, it could be that the string was produced poorly, similar to the incorrect fretboard design. It could be that I installed that string incorrectly and I had some kind of pressure or stress on it that it broke. Or it could be just that the strings are very old and that um, with wear and tear, they eventually break. So uh, the current process controls for all of these is simply just to replace the strings before every show, similar to tuning it, right? And then lastly, what if the potential failure mode is that there's no sound, uh, right? So nobody can hear the music and maybe the causes are is that I didn't plug in the guitar, I didn't plug in the microphone, um, I forgot to turn on the amplifier, or maybe I've got an obstruction on the string. Maybe I've left my guitar pick in the strings and it's not ringing true the way you would like. Um, so with each of these, there's a different level of occurrence. The severity, likewise, is all the same because if nobody can hear it, um, that's the worst thing that could happen, right? Is that nobody can hear your music. Uh, and then the detectability, likewise, changes with um, the, the failure mode. So you can see with all of these, you can, uh, this is kind of a fun example um, on how you can use an FMEA to and apply it to just about anything in life. What's really important is that we start here with kind of what the customer is experiencing. What is the failure mode? What went wrong? It's not necessarily the cause. We'll get to that. This is kind of like a root cause analysis tool. But really, what did we experience that we didn't like? And this is a very kind of customer journey, customer perspective. And from that, we can work our way through the effects of our causes and then assign severity, likelihood of occurrence, and detectability to generate a bunch of priorities. And then we can generate improved systems, improved countermeasures that can uh, give us a reduced risk and a greater robustness in whatever process we're doing, whether that's heavy manufacturing, healthcare, or simply playing the guitar.